Okay, today I'm going to show you how I created this sword model. At the time, I'd only been introduced to the basics of SolidWorks and learning the solid modeling and assembly side of SolidWorks. In a program called Key Creator, I had been introduced for the first time to surface modeling. And I wanted to create, uh, explore surface modeling in SolidWorks. So this is a project of me just kind of playing around and exploring surface modeling and more complex solid modeling in SolidWorks to kind of expand the horizon. Okay, so I've rolled back the history now and I'm going to show you step by step how I created this sword. I started off with just a little profile sketch here and this sketch wasn't really meant to be anything functional. I just was being creative with my blade design and came across this. Uh, it's not necessarily meant to be functional and really anyway, but it created kind of a cool cool looking blade in my opinion. Let me open up the sweep here and show you just how I created it. Your first sketch here on the very back is your profile, then the guideline, which basically lets it know it's going straight. And then I have two guide curves here, upper and lower, and I can actually turn those off and you'll see what happens when I do. It just kind of goes straight and then I turn the bottom off. That's that would basically the blade I was forming, and then I created those curves to allow it to create the actual blade that you see in the final project. Going on, I created a little plane and a loft. I wanted to uh, expand it out, make it a kind of a soft curve here, so I just used a loft, a solid, solid loft, from the profile to an oval. I created a split line because I kind of wanted this thing to fan out into the hilt. This is where I get into the surface modeling. Your first one is just a simple loft, which kind of goes up, just like that. A weird little piece. And I created another one on the other side and mirrored it down, just like that. Now I used a sketch here in the next one. So I'm going to kind of create a, uh, start closing this surface model that I'm building, which basically goes from here to the back. You'll see it in a minute. Uh, I created a couple planes here, which you'll see in this next sketch. Which uh, you'll really start to see the where it comes together now. Here's the surfaced fill. What this consists of is four sketches and some remaining boundaries that are already on this solid model here. And let me open this up for you. <coughs> so we have the four sketches and two edges, which are these are the edges, and then the sketches. Your first sketch is 15 your back sketch which is the the middle and then it's starting to go towards the handle back here and I created some depth a little curve for the outside and now I'm going to just mirror this around to kind of finish this off just flip it to the other side and bring it down from the next one and I'm going to create a sketch here and I'm going to get these points and put a little point on this uh, a little revolve and then a mirror over. And now I want to create this into a solid, just a big block that kind of looks like that, so I have to close off the ends. So I create this surface face fill there, and then I knitted it together, and I thought I had it, but then I realized I hadn't quite filled all the sides here. I, the front was open. So I created a little surface fill there. as a solid, I wanted to create the handle part. But before I do that, I want to create a little bit of a transition. I'm going to do that in two sketches here. Let me bring it right to where you can see it. Now this sketch was actually kind of tricky. I tried to do it as one piece and just create a little loft or yeah, basically a loft to it, but it didn't work. So I ended up creating this as these are each independent curves two sides and then two more curves along the bottom and you'll see how those match up to the surface lofts in this next part I'm going to show you. Okay, now the first loft goes from this curve to that curve on the profile sketch that you'll see and I just go around here in four motions, one, two, three, four, and then cap off the sides like that and then the front and back and now I have a solid piece. Now let's move on to the handle. I do this with the sweep command so it's actual solid out of surfaces into solids again. And I'm going to open this up to show you just how I did that in one move. Started off with the profile sketch on the front 
In this case, the bottom is the path, and the top is the guide curve. So when I turn this off, you just end up with a wavy loft, which is what I do not want. I turn the guide curve on, and now you can grab it with the palm of your hand and put your fingers in the recesses. So I'll turn that off, and we'll move on to the counterweight. Okay, let me break this down before I actually create the surface loft to kind of show you what's going on here. I'm going to have one sketch here, and then the top sketch. So I have two sketches. These are my, this is going to give it the real shape here, and then I'm going to connect it to my hilt with this little sketch here. Just like that, surface loft, and then I'm going to do it on the bottom. And I'm going to show you how that breaks down. Got your side, which is the same sketch that I used before, and then a new sketch on the bottom to create a little bit deeper and kind of so it's at a bit of a slant, and then the same sketch on the end of the handle. I'm just going to mirror that over and surface fill it to create it as a solid. Now, this is where it gets real fun when I start to detail it. Alright, so at, up to this point, we've just created that body of the sword. And when you really put it all into its perspective, here, let me show it all. It's kind of boring. It doesn't really catch your eye or really impress anybody. And maybe it looks like a letter opener at some points, or maybe, I don't know, maybe you could run it through something. So I'm going to actually create details here, little cuts into this blade. And then I'm going to make it into a glass material so it's real eye-catchy to somebody. So I'm going to use extrude cuts throughout this. I create a plane on the side of the sword, and I'm just going to push it right through my model here. So I started off with an M, because my name starts with Michael. Or Mr. Smith, if you're, depending on where you're referring me from. And uh, just a little sketch here, and what I end up doing is just creating a lot of uh, splines, and then trimming it out and auto-defining these sketches. I won't be able to show you them all because it will just lag my computer while I'm trying to record this video. And I'm going to throw in a few fillets, just kind of make that more soft. And then I'm going to use another extrude here to kind of create more detail, kind of a maybe more of a feather or a flame type look to it. And then one more cut uh, through the very top here. And now you have something that is really cool looking. Probably be really hard to make in real life, but it looks real cool in 3D. And now I'm going to combine this into one piece because I'm going to actually be cutting across multiple solids at the same point on the front here. Let me just bring this back to where you can see it. This next extrude is creating the top and bottom kind of to complement the curve I've created. And then I'm going to throw in some diamonds here. Those are just kind of little extra pieces. I've experimented with throwing it more down the sword, but found that two diamonds was about as much as I wanted to go. And then this last sketch is called a, a surface offset extrude cut on the top, and that is probably the most detailed sketch of them all, but it's only, it's very shallow, and that'll create some cool lighting effects once we put it in the glass. And then along the bottom, couldn't actually mirror it, you have to recreate it on the bottom. And now you have my finished model. I don't actually have the text on this one. I did put some text on the blade, but I don't necessarily like it. And now I have my sword that's finished. And that is how I created my SolidWorks sword.